You know, I looked around, established what was going on, kind of got my bearings. When I turned around, I saw that Specialist Kane Schilling had been hit in his right shoulder area. So the bullet had actually went into his arm and came out the top of his shoulder. As I turned over, I saw him running, running down the trail to what was just like a, a little cut and kind of this draw that was coming down. And that was already occupied by some a and soldiers and the interpreter at the time. And so the only thing that was on the trail that provided some sort of concealment was just a, a top of, you know, one tree, bushy tree. And so that's where he chose to just, you know, kind of sit down. And I knew he'd been hit, so I got up and ran to him. I got to him, looked at his arm, saw it was bleeding. But at the time, you know, I made a decision that there's, there's too much going on right now, too much fire. I didn't have time to bandage him up. The bleeding was significant enough where I, I thought to just put a tourniquet on, wrap it up, stop the bleeding, and then I would address it further later. I dropped my radio pack. It was heavy, weighing me down, and then I wanted to also relay up to the home base what, was, what the situation was. As I was doing that, I noticed a, a weird taste in my mouth. It was kind of a, a metallic taste, and then I felt a, a burning in my chest when I was breathing, and then Kane also felt it as well. And my initial thought was, you know, holy crap, where are the the first people to get you know, chemical weapons used on us. Corner of my eye, I saw my pack smoking. So what had happened was my radio got shot and the, the lithium battery was actually burning. And so that was giving off that, that aroma. So I just you know, tossed my pack to the side and <laughs> that was the end of that. <laughs>